ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another edition of Hello Pastor on Focus on Liberia. My name is Dennis Ja, and we are broadcasting from Atlanta, Georgia. Every other Sunday, we are here with Reverend Dr. Chandler Jean Freeman to discuss questions, some questions that we have, that I have, and that you have on your mind. Some of these questions have never been asked. Some have been asked, but they have really never been discussed in depth. And so we use this time to discuss this thought-provoking question from someone who knows a little more than all of or than most of us on these very important issues. I will now take this time to welcome Reverend Dr. Chandler G. Freeman. Pastor, hello. Yes, welcome. Brother Dennis, good evening and happy Sunday. And uh, to all those who are listening, we want to welcome you to another broadcast of Hello Pastor. And, and Pastor, while you are there, I know you do other things. Hello Pastor is just, we just engage you for an hour to answer some of your uh, questions for us. But besides here, you do a whole lot teaching on the word of God. Tell us a little bit about that and where we can follow you to listen. Yes. Uh, well, you can follow me on uh, on YouTube. Uh, the, the YouTube channel is called Gospel Reach TV. And uh, if you go to that, uh, and even if you hit on the playlist, you will see all the listings uh, that we provide there. And so you can get me on YouTube. You can also get me on Instagram. You can get me on Facebook, and you can also get me every Saturday morning. Uh, that's 1030 to 11 o'clock on radio, WEMM 107.9. And so these are just some of the ways, uh, Brother Dennis, that individuals who are listening to the broadcast today uh, can be able to follow me, yes, other than on uh uh, this show too. Th thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, before we even go into our discussion today, why is what is the reason for Hello Pastor? And why is it important for those listening? And why you love this? I mean, when you when you on Hello Pastor, we can see your last job on TV. So tell us about Hello Pastor. Hello Pastor has a primary purpose. And the purpose of Hello Pastor is to provide a biblical perspective on, on some of the popular questions and the popular topics um, that, um, that we need to know about. And so Hello Pastor is the forum that will give you a biblical perspective on these matters. Like, you know, uh, what is the Bible saying? concerning these different topics because you can get uh, answers from a political perspective. Hello Pastor doesn't pro provide a political perspective. Hello Pastor doesn't provide a sociological perspective. Hello Pastor is deeply rooted in that which is biblical, what's the Bible saying, and, and from a theological and systematic angle. Thank you very much, and that's why that's why I asked that question because people may be watching for the first time and say, "Oh, this hello, Pastor, what is that?" And let's talk about yourself. You know, my last question is, why you love this so much? Oh, brother Dennis, uh, I have a mandate. You know, uh, primary calling uh, is to be able to teach individuals uh it's a calling you know and i you know before you go into the uh the ministry there is a calling and that calling is is is, is a personal thing where god calls you uh, to do a particular work and for me that primary work has to do with teaching the word of god reaching individuals with the word of god I was called into the gospel ministry, Brother Dennis, at a time when other young people like me were, you know, becoming freedom fighters. Other young people were me were becoming rebels and everything. It was in this context that God had 
called me uh, to, to serve him by teaching other young people and teaching the gospel. And so it's the only thing that really can give an individual meaning because we were out of place, Brother Dennis, during that particular period uh, in Liberia when individuals were losing houses. If you had money, Brother Dennis, the money couldn't do anything for you because the stores weren't open. And so it was in this particular context that God had called me, put a mandate on my heart to teach individuals uh, the word of God. Now, why do I do it? Because God wants us to love him with our heart, our soul, and our mind. And so that's why primarily we engage in individuals uh, from a mental, intellectual perspective so that their hearts, they can give their life to Jesus. And that's what's going to give individuals meaning purpose, beauty, and everything. Thank, thank you so much. You heard it. Now, we want to welcome all our viewers from across the globe. If you have not done so already, please uh, grab a paper and pen and take down notes. We're going to be talking about what the Bible says concerning certain things. These are questions that we hear around every day. So we're going to go into it. We're going to talk about what does the Bible say about drinking alcohol? smoking cigarette, using drugs. And uh, we'll do our best to uh, go through all this. If we can't, well, we'll see how far we can go. And the goal here is not, you know, for debate, but we want to hear the biblical perspective on these things. What does the Bible say about homosexuality? What the Bible says about abortion? What does the Bible say about female circumcision? What does the Bible say about the obligation of leaders to citizens and then citizens to leaders? What does the Bible say about medicine or voodoo, charm, lucky charm? You know, if you want to know book, book medicine or love charms. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say about the correct way of doing business, about living the American dream, self-actualization self or being successful? You know, we all come to America, we want success. What does the Bible say about that? Shall we? And last but not the least, what does the Bible say we should do when we have a friend who falls in trouble? These are the questions we're going to be looking at, uh, Pastor Freeman. And uh, let's start with the uh, end. This is in response to our last week. You know, we we're on our, our series and people were asking what the Bible say about this, what the Bible say. So we try to address a few of these questions here tonight. And if you still have more questions, please don't hesitate to drop us a line at focusonlabro at gmail, or you can reach out directly to Pastor Freeman. So Pastor Freeman, let's start with alcohol, cigarette, drug use. Is it even in the Bible? Well, the, um, the, the two that are in the Bible uh, specifically, the first two that are in the Bible, you definitely have uh, alcohol in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you look at the Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1, where it says strong drink. So that's a reference to alcohol. That's a, that's a reference to, to spirits, which are strong drink. And that's, that's a reference to, to wine and everything. So, yes. That alcohol, brother Dennis, it, 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 like it, it, it's just there. Wine is a marker, strong drink is a brawl, and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. And so the question of is there alcohol in the Bible? Definitely, you have a passage uh, that addresses that. And so, uh, but the most important thing I like to stress, brother Dennis, the Bible puts a focus on forbids drunkenness. And, and, and so I have to be very, very clear uh, as I do an exposition on the matter. So what the Bible forbids, Brother Dennis, is drunkenness, right? Now, and so, so this, is, this is the issue here. Number one, the Bible speaks against drunkenness and the Bible speaks against addiction and the Bible speaks against that which is harmful to our health, right? But then in Romans chapter 14, verse one, 
for the Christian, there is another dimension that we have to talk about. This dimension has to do with the weaker brother. Now, a person might have the liberty in the sense where a person might be drinking and that person, Brother Dennis, is drinking in such a way the person doesn't get drunk, right? But if that person is drinking, let's say the person has a title in the church, and that is Romans chapter 14, verse 1 now. That's what we have to take into consideration. That person is drinking, Brother Dennis, at a bar. And that person is a worship leader that leads worship in the church. Mm. And a weaker brother sees that person. And that has, is detrimental to the faith of the weaker brother. And so when we talk about alcohol, it's very important, yes, the Bible speaks against drunkenness. The Bible speaks against addiction. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, anything that is harmful to the body, it means that's not proper stewardship of the body. But the reference that is most important, Brother Dennis, is that if your lifestyle can make another fall, especially this Romans chapter 14 concerning the weaker brother. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinion. It is possible, Brother Dennis, that you can do something that can have an effect, even though you have liberty, but it is possible that you can conduct your life in such a way. And so what are the reasons for us not doing it? I think that's the question we are focusing on yeah. because it can be detrimental to, to a weaker brother in the faith and to individuals in the faith. Another thing, Brother Dennis, is this. Most people have asked me the question, well, well why do we, if the problem, Reverend, is, is drunkenness, why do I, why do people say, you know, uh, if the individual has no, no control, why should he, but you know, Brother Dennis, some people are, are, are addictive, addictive uh, personalities in a sense yeah. you know this is very this is alcohol is very very addictive for some individuals now i'm talking to you from a clinical perspective yeah. for some individuals uh, brother dennis they cannot put alcohol in their mouth because they won't be able to stop drinking so uh, uh alcohol is addictive now the chinese have a proverb they say a man takes a drink a drink takes a drink and the drink takes a man let me repeat that. A man takes a drink. A drink takes a drink. The drink takes the man. There are cases where uh, why shouldn't that particular individual drink? Because the individual uh, can move into drunkenness rapidly because they started with one drink. Okay. And so I, I, I need to be very, very clear about this particular matter. All right. And, and so, so, Pastor, are you saying that... Uh, because it's against drunkenness. So we can drink, but don't get drunk. And then that's one question. And then the second part is, uh, as long as our drinking does not make somebody to stumble, so we can be discreet about it, is that okay? Well, that's that, that's, that's, that's the, uh, because Brother Dennis, remember now, uh, Jesus was at a wedding where he turned water into wine. Yeah. And and so the, the, the Bible, the Bible doesn't forbid drinking. And you, you, you're talking about, let me let me do something what is called biblical background. You're talking about the ancient Near East, Brother but Dennis, where the water situation today in our current modern world is totally different from in the ancient Near East, where the water wasn't as the kind of water we have today. And a lot of the swine was even used as a substitute during this particular period. But Jesus was at a wedding where Jesus, so the issue, Brother Dennis, has to do with uh where individuals drink, where if they're not going to be, you know, given into drunkenness. Because the Bible in, in the Ephesians passage is this: it talks about don't be filled with wine, which is excess. Don't get drunk, yeah. but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So yes, if the individual is mindful of not making others to fall as a result of of their particular lifestyle uh, and doing it in such a way where they're not getting drunk, then there's no problem. 
Thank you. Let, let's go to cigarette and drug use. They, they fall in that same category. Yes, the, the, the cigarette, the cigarette, the cigarette use is basically from the first Corinthians chapter 620, where your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Now, if you're doing something where it's, it's detrimental, you know, to your health, even the pack on the pack, it says that it's going to lead to cancer. Would you mm -hmm. not be, you know, uh, uh, for you were born with a price to so glorify God in your body. So this is the whole idea, Brother Dennis, that, okay. You're doing something, but it's it's it, it, it's it's destroying your health. It's destroying mm -hmm. it's destroying your body. It's destroying your lungs and everything. But that's just ordinary cigarette. When we're talking about smoking, we're not just talking about when we say smoking. We're not just talking about ordinary cigarette, brother. Then we're also right. talking about weed. Yeah. So what does that do to the individual? Well, what you have an individual is is putting something into their body that clouds their thinking. That's the first thing. Secondly, a person is doing something, Brother Dennis, that uh, takes away motivation. Takes away their motivation and everything. And so, uh, and, and then also over a long period of time, uh, I have seen cases uh, of, of even individuals who prolonged use have led to mental illness yeah. or drugs. Thank and you. so, uh, uh, so it's, it's just important for us to be better stewards of our bodies, to be better caretakers of our bodies, yeah. Th thank you. That, that leads on to the next topic, which is, uh, I must admit, it's sensitive, especially here in the United States. Homosexuality, abortion, but we'll start with homosexuality. And we just I just want a biblical perspective. What does the Bible say about that, if it says anything at all? Yes, the Bible is very clear for the Dennis about homosexuality. But the passage that I like to read from quickly uh, is this uh, Genesis chapter 19 passage. Genesis chapter 19. And I like to read um, Genesis chapter 19. I like to start by reading in verse 4. But before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the men to the last man surrounded the house and they called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door after him and said, I beg you, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Behold, I have two daughters who have not known any man. Let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please. Only do nothing to these men, for they have come under the shelter of my roof. But they said, stand back. And they said, this fellow came to sojourn, and he has become the judge. Now we will deal worse with you than with them. And then they pressed hard against the men lot and drew near to break the door down. So brother, Daniel, this is the question, what was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah? So the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah is very is, is clear in this particular passage. The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah, brother Dennis, is the sin of homosexuality. Two angels, brother Dennis, in Genesis chapter 19 had come to the city. And when Lot saw these two men, at first Lot didn't know that they were angels. He just saw them as men. Lot told these men, do not sleep in the town square. Lot invited these men uh, to his home. When the story begins in Genesis chapter 19, Brother Dennis, we didn't know why Lot invited these uh, two men to his home. It's going to be later on. Lot had given these men food to eat and everything. Then the text, Brother Dennis, listen now. In verse 4, it says, all the men of Sodom, from young to old, all the people to the last, they surrounded this house. And they told Lot that Lot should bring, let the two men come outside because they wanted to sleep with these two men. They wanted to have sexual relationship with these two men. And so when we talk about, now it's so interesting though, because this is this gives you an idea of attempted. Now you have a population of a million. 
of a million. All the men, the Bible is clear in telling us all the men, this is a tempted gang rape. So the men, the men here are, uh, and so when Lot begins to beg them, you know, they told Lot, they say, Who made you the judge? Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting though? Who made you the judge? Lot is saying to you that you should not gang rape the men. But when Lot begins to speak to them about the matter, they say to him, you are a judge. So what is happening, brother Dennis, is that what we have here is moral blindness. Moral blindness is where when you're telling people the truth, they say you are judging. <laughs> but they were the one trying to break the door down to gain rape to angel that God has sent to find out if the city was actually really as wicked because the abomination had come out to God. Now, what you have here, Brother Dennis, is that they were trying to break the door down. And so it's fascinating when we talk about the sin of Sodom. The sin of Sodom is not that they were not even hospitable to Lot who were living in the city. They have planned now. They said they were going to do worse to Lot than the men who have come. So you have, Brother Dennis, over maybe 500,000 men who come in to rape an, an elderly man and then uh, attempted to rape two holy angels, elect angels. But the angels struck them with blindness. Yeah. Okay, look, in verse verse 11, Brother Dennis, I find it fascinating. It says, and they struck with blindness the men at the entrance of the house, both great and small, so that they wore themselves out groping for the door. <laughs> the, the desire, even though they were blind, they still want to get to the door. It gives you an idea of the nature of this particular sin. Ralph Rennie, what Ralph Rennie will call in his book, The Sinfulness of Sin. And so you're talking about an abomination uh, 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 against, uh, to totally abomination, totally a violation totally against uh, the will and the commandments of the Lord. Th th thank you. So what, what should be, the next question is, definitely things, we have, homos we have homosexuals in our midst. What should be our relationship with them? Let's say if they were in the church, should we put them out? Should we put them on a synod bench? I come from the Assembly of God background where we have a bench at the back of the church. So what should we do? Well, Brother Dennis, in this particular pericope, it's fascinating because in this particular pericope, you have people who are trying to break an elderly man's door down, yeah. right? They're trying to break that door down. So it's not a situation of where, in this particular text, they are in the majority, right? right. And they're trying, so they... So this message, Brother Dennis, I know today we talk about a message of tolerance. But notice in this particular text, where they tolerant, Brother Dennis, they're trying to break a door down to rip mm -hmm. an elderly man and the two angels. So <laughs> they were not on the bench. In this text, they are yeah. in front of the door, trying to break the door down to have their way. But the question you are asking me is a question of, uh, the church, Brother Dennis, the doors of the church are open to everybody. Jesus said, come to me. And when he said, come to me, he's talking about everybody. But all have seen and come to the glory of God, right? right. And so we don't, we don't put, we don't, Brother Dennis, we don't put a special bench in the church. Everybody, is seen us come to the church. And our prayer is that they will move from being sinners to sins, right? Right. Because Paul said, I write the letter to the saints in this, at this place, Galatia, in Rome. A saint is just a person who has been saved by the grace of God, right? right. That's all it is. So what, what, that's, that's the main thing. All right. Let's go to let's, the next one. What does the Bible say about abortion? And abortion, let me, so that you will touch on this. When is it allowed, when it is not allowed, or is it not allowed at all? 
So let's talk about what does the Bible say? And, and really, how does the Bible define abortion? Well, Brother Dennis, um, the Bible talks about the Bible talks about murder, right? Right. Okay. And so you have a passage in Exodus, in Exodus chapter one, uh, because the, the issue here is it, it, it's very important for us to get like maybe like an understanding, fundamental understanding of a topic uh, before we get into it. So in in Exodus, let me just read something quickly for you. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 15, the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of them, her name was Shipra and the other one was Pa. When you serve as a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birth stool, if it is a son, you shall kill him. If the daughter, she shall live. But the midwives did fear God and did not do as the king of Egypt had commanded them, but they let the and so what, what you have here is that the the killing, the killing of, 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 of babies is not you. And and so we just we just call it today in our particular uh, 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 era abortion. But this was going on now, uh, Exodus chapter one. When the king of Israel said, the king of Egypt said, if if it's a bill, kill. Mm -hmm. But if it's a girl, let her live. And so, Brother Dennis, the, the, the issue here we are talking about is that uh the main in, 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 in Psalm 139, 13, 14. Let me see if we can get that posted there. When a, a, a child is in the womb and it's exterminated, that's murder, brother, isn't it? That's murder that just happened. That's murder that just happened. And so the Bible says that uh, uh, we shouldn't, uh, in Proverbs chapter 6, 16 to 19, some of the things that God hit is to the hands that shed innocent blood. You're talking about innocent blood. Yeah. So uh, that's the Bible position on the matter, mm -hmm. that abortion is murder. That's, that's the biblical position on the matter. Good. And, and that's why I was asking for the definition, right? Because you know, I know it's a political question. They say, oh, it, after this time, three months, one month. I, I remember there was, a, there was a story in the Bible, and you can, uh, you can uh, uh, point me to that story about, I think, men using the withdrawal method because they didn't want to have children and God said that was wrong. So when is abortion, when does abortion start? Oh, brother Dennis, let me read for you, uh, if I can read for you Psalm, uh, maybe Psalm 139, it will provide perspective. Okay. Maybe Psalm 139. Uh, let me read for you Psalm 139, verse 13 and 14. Maybe it will provide perspective for us. It says, you form my inward part, right? Yeah. And you knitted me together in my mother's womb. So the question is, when when is there life? Conception, Brother Dennis? Yeah. At conception. You 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 are you already alive, Brother Dennis, even in your mother's womb, you are alive. So if you you if you exterminate that. But I didn't, you just, you just, you just, you just committed murder. Yeah. So that's how the Bible look at when you are in your mother's womb. You are, you are a human being. Day, <laughs> day, day one. What, brother Dennis? Once the egg and the sperm meet, right. life has been created. And what is happening now is just developmental stages. Developmental stages. But at conception, that's life. And when you exterminate that, you have just, you have just, that's innocent blood. You have terminated. Now that's the, that's the biblical, because the Bible tells you in the inward part, God knitted me together in my mother's womb. That's the idea that God saw this as life. Yeah. And God is telling the men of God, 
that I knew the plans I have for you, brother Dennis, when when he was in his what? Mother's womb. So so if brother Dennis, if you had terminated the prophet, mm -hmm. you have actually destroyed the destiny of a human being. A child of destiny have been destroyed. So the question we are dealing with is uh the question of when does life begin? Life begins, brother Dennis, at conception. Life begins when you're in the womb. That's when life begins. Thank you. Yes. Let's go to our the next one, which is uh, especially we talk about it in Liberia. What does the Bible say about female circumcision? Okay, that's a good question, brother Dennis. That's a good question. Richard, uh, there's this uh, uh, um, scholar, brother Dennis. I just want to talk about him to kind of give us some background. Because in, in terms of how I would address this question, mm -hmm. his name was Richard Niebuhr. He wrote this classical book called Christ in Culture. And in this book, Brother Dennis, he says that uh, Christ is the transformer of culture. There are certain practices, Brother Dennis, in our culture, but they are cultural practices. They're not Christian mm -hmm. practices. Mm -hmm. And one of these practices is the practice of, of female circumcision, or some people use the term female mutilation. Yeah, female the word genital is, mutilation. Is used, yeah? It's a female genital mutilation. Yes, yes. The word can be used interchangeably. Is it circumcision yeah. or is it mutilation? Okay, but when you become a Christian now, that mm -hmm. means that the authority over your life. That's why I, I started to start with the concept. I started with Niebuhr. When you become a Christian, the authority for your life and for faith is the word of God. Now, let me give you a, a how the Bible looks at this particular matter. Number one, Genesis chapter one, verse 31. Mutilation, brother Dennis, denies goodness and its destruction. So, brother, it is every now in Genesis chapter one, it kept on repeating, and God said it was good. And God said it was good. So, what's the what's the what's the purpose of the mutilation? Are you saying that the female body that God created it wasn't good? And so, when when mutilation is done, mm -hmm. is it goes against conservation of life and health mm -hmm. from a biblical perspective. If God says something is good, and you come now to mutilate, what but, happened? But, that? But, but, Pastor, that's that's just a probably choice of word because main circumcision or the male circumcision is not called mutilation. So I don't know. So because, it, it, because, because, because uh, brother Dennis, the circumcision mm -hmm. in the Bible, but the circumcision was an instruction. Okay. So mm -hmm. the reason why. The, the circumcision, we have allowance for the male circumcision because that it was a sign of the covenant. It was a sign of the covenant of the people of God. A major part of the, 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 the covenant was the circumcision. And so we see that also, uh, 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 that's why there was a time in the Exodus when God wanted to kill the two sons of Moses because they had not been circumcised. So you're talking about what is part of the covenant. But what was part of the covenant was in female circumcision. And so the three, the, the three reasons for, for what the Bible speaks to, number one, that it goes against the conservation of life and health because the goodness of the female body, you see there's something wrong with it. That's the first thing. And then first Corinthians, that the body is a temple. And so you have preservation of the temple, right? Mm -hmm. And then finally, healthy reproduction. Psalm 128, verse 6. Later on, we see we've had so many cases of complications. Mm. Complication when it comes to do with the beginning of birth and, and, and etc. Uh, and so these are the biblical positions for why we do it, we shouldn't do it. Because you deny the mutilation, deny the goodness that the woman was created, the Bible says she was fashioned mm. and endowed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Wonderfully and fearfully made. So mutilation denies that goodness, right? Mm -hmm. 
if the individual uh, uh, is the temple of God, when you cut in, uh, that goes against the preservation of our bodies. And finally, the effect it has from Psalm 128, verse 3, when it comes to healthy, uh, uh, in, in giving childbirth, so we have cases, Brother Dennis, where the women have died. They just stop, they, they don't stop bleeding. We've had this case. Right. So, yes. so let's say an adult female who decides to do this, who say, well, I want to mutilate my own body. I know about the about the uh, whatever repercussion, and I feel this is a cultural identity that I must do. This is what I choose to do. Is that wrong? Biblical? But Brother Dennis, this is the thing. The the in the is this person we're talking about, Brother Dennis? Is this person a Christian? Yeah. I mean, but I, don't, Dennis, I, don't, I don't all. You know, let's say the person is a Christian. Oh, oh, okay, so 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 let me address it. Let me address it in 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 in. Let me address first. If the person is a Christian, then let me address first. If the person, if the person, brother Dennis, is not a Christian, then hello, pastor, we got anything to say. Right. But if the if we are talking about a person who is trying to follow God's standard for their life, then we are having another conversation. If it's a person, brother Dennis, who just want to follow whatever the cultural norms are. Then, then if the person is not a follower trying to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, then we don't have anything to say. The person can do whatever they want to do. But if it's a person who's trying to follow Jesus Christ, then the biblical standard, the identification is with Christ. The identification is not with the culture. Because they say, if any man be in Christ, he's a new one. So that means your own identity changes. Christ comes and he changes our culture, our uh, uh, the way how we were doing culture. Christ gives us a new culture, and that culture is a Christ-centered culture. And so when a person is following Jesus, the person embraces a new culture, the culture of heaven, the culture of the word of God. I hope that's very clear, Brother Dennis. No, that, that's, that's clear. If we have more questions, uh, especially from our... Let, let's let's take me to the, to the next one because I want us to uh, get this one. And if you want further study on this, uh, Pastor Freeman has somewhere for you to go. And I will put that on the screen quickly so that uh, he has his YouTube channel, The Gospel Rich TV. Okay. And so you can go there and follow. If you have other questions and you want to engage, uh, Pastor. Freeman, please feel free and we will provide that uh, avenue. Let's go to uh, something that is very common. You know, I was born in a village all the way behind God's back. And there are certain things that people do. In a, so let's look at what does the Bible say about chanting, about voodoos, about chants. And here's the story. When I was preparing for this, uh, this edition, I was talking to a friend. And they said, well, before people used to leave from America and go back to Liberia for medicine, either for love, so you can find your spouse, man or woman, or people even go for book medicine, they say, or people are chanting voodoo. He said, but these days now the witchcraft and say have visas to come to the United States. So <laughs> you can do all that right here. What does the Bible say? Well, Brother Dennis, witchcraft, uh, there's, there's so many places in the Bible where the Bible addresses, you know, when you, there's so basically uh, these words that you're talking about, chanting, spells, curses, all these things are all under the category of witchcraft. All these are, let me see if we can get the uh, uh, Deuteronomy passage out there quickly. Maybe we can get the Leviticus 1926. Let's see. Uh, controls. Okay, so. Oh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to get a passage out there, Leviticus 19 26. It's well, let me see if I can just read it quickly. It's okay, but I listen to something. We got that, right? Yes. You you shall not eat any flesh with the blood in it. You shall not interpret omens or tell fortunes. 
You shall not round off the hair on your temple or mar the edges of your beard. You shall not make any cuts. Okay, so brother Dennis, what you have here is uh, you just that's just one of the passages uh, that has to do with witchcraft. Let me get another one, and then I will start. Let me once I I I give some of the passages, then I will start to do commentary because that would be a better approach for me. Uh like the Acts chapter 19, verse 18. Okay, it says, also many of those who are now believers came confessing and divulging their practices. And a number of those who have practiced magic arts, but Denise, you see the magic arts, right? Yeah. They brought their books together and burned them in the sight of all. And they counted the value of them and found that it came out to 50,000 pieces of silver. Mm. So, Brother Dennis, we have witchcraft in the Bible. But when the people gave their life to Christ, Brother Dennis, these books that they were using, they confessed the king, they confessed their sins. They brought the books, they burned it, they stopped practicing witchcraft. And so, they, so even in, in Exodus, when Moses went to talk to Pharaoh, he put a snake down. That was a miracle, right? Yeah, right. It turned into the snakes turned into snake. But the Egyptian magician, so we got two power in the world: God power, satanic power. When Moses put his stick down, it was a miracle. When the enchanter, the sorcerer, put their stick down, they were using dark arts. They were using satanic power, right? They put it down. It turned into a snake. And so it's important for us to recognize that voodoo power, we are not denying that it's a power. But we are saying that that power is not God's power. Hmm. That's the first point we are saying. We're not saying that voodoo power is not power, brother Dennis. Voodoo power is power. Witchcraft is a power. But the source of that power is not God. It has Satan and demons. Hmm. And so it's important for us to understand that that particular power is not God's power. Detrimental for your life, though. Uh, that's not how God wants us to live. And so there's so many warnings. In fact, they, they say the individual who practice, we should not live. The Bible says that we should not even live. Mm -hmm. And so God didn't even want this to be a part of, of the people of God. Because mm -hmm. how devastating. Yes. No, explain that verse because I, I, I hear that a lot. Suffer not the wish to live. Does it mean that uh, we should hang them or execute them? Or what, what no, is brother it? Dennis, no, 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 no. Right now, we're not, nobody, 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 no, that, nobody broke. In that particular period, uh, you know, there was not supposed to be witches in Israel and everything. But in our time, they are all around us. They got uh, places all around us where witches are and everything. So the only thing in our context today is that we will have to make sure that we're following God's word. And if you want, Brother Dennis, if a person, let me just deal with case by case. If the person, Brother Dennis, wants to do well in school, let me just deal with that. Let me just deal with that one, number one first, Brother Dennis. Let me start with number one. The person, Brother Dennis, wants to pass in school, right? Right. So the person said, I will go to the village in Africa to get something from there so I can be able to pass in school. But Brother Dennis, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Let me read you something from the book of Daniel. It is Daniel chapter seven, 1 verse 17. It says, as for the four youth God gave them learning and skill in all literature and wisdom. Right? right. That's verse 17. How about verse 20? And in every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king inquired of them, he found them to be ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters that were in the land and in the kingdom. So, Brother Dennis, basically, what am I saying to you? Right? Right. When I came to America, that's my verse. That's my life verse. 
when I came to America, Brother Dennis, I finished college. It's a four-year degree, but I finished college in America in two years. Because I believe God can give us wisdom. You don't have to go get any kind of witchcraft. You don't have to go to get any kind of charm. You just have to study and apply yourself. You don't need no, nothing from nobody. Because those things later on have effect on individual lives and everything. But so God's way, the hello pastor is about us doing God's way. Can God mm -hmm. give you learning and skill and knowledge? Yes. You have to seek God. You have to pray. And then you have to also study. But brother, didn't these people who go in to get a thing, so they don't want to study, right? They, 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 want they don't to, want to use the brain that God has given. They don't want to read, right? They, they just want a little help. What help? <laughs> <laughs> brother, didn't these people do want to apply themselves? When God wants you to apply yourself, right? So they don't want to read. So they go and get some kind of book so that the book, so how will you not want to know the thing that you are studying? Mm -hmm. To really know it and, and really know it accurately, right? right? How will you not want to learn and learn it accurately? And so the Bible said that Daniel and the youth, God gave them, but they didn't go nowhere. They didn't go to no bush. They didn't consult no oracle. They didn't talk to any kind of baba. Nowhere. They just applied themselves. They continue to study, and God bless them. There is God's way, brother Dennis. I need mean, the thing, the dichotomy I'm trying to make is that we can do it God's way, or we can refuse God's way. You can get both from India, Nigeria, wherever. But it's not going to be success God's way. And it doesn't last. Hmm. But God's way, Brother Dennis, lasts. Thank you. It's not going to be short lived. And you're not going to lose your mind in the end. And you don't have to give any sacrifice for it. Because the Bible said the blessing of God, it, it can reach without no sorrow. But when you refuse to do something God's way, then later on, that's when people see that they taught the shortcut. Then they start experiencing so many problems. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, this is Hello Pastor with Reverend Dr. Chandler G. Freeman. Hello Pastor comes your way every other Sunday at 6 p.m. Eastern, where we address some biblical questions and let the pastor provide us with some explanations and so far so good he's doing excellent pastor Fremo, i have three more questions and they will i don't want to take you out of the church but this is reality right in, in liberia and i'm on uh, i been <laughs> doing this talk show thing for some time now where we talk a lot of politics citizen leadership you know the government is this the citizens this that my question to you is not to put you into politics. I know uh, you don't even watch the political side often. But what should be our obligation as citizens to our leaders and vice versa? And what should the leaders do for us? And I want to give you a clear example. I'm a citizen. George Weah is my president. So as citizens, what should we be doing? And let me put some options out there. Most of the time we criticize the government. We accuse the government of corruption and all kinds of things. On the other hand, the government, we believe, is stealing our money, is employing incompetent people, is, uh, and when I talk about leaders, legislators, everybody else. So in this case, what should we do and what should our leaders do? What should be, what's the obligation of citizens to leaders and leaders to the citizens or their Oh, oh. Okay, okay, brother Dennis, let me address the, 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 brother Dennis, I don't know if you, if you remember, I, you know, brother Dennis, I attended, uh, I attended elementary and junior high school on the old road. I don't know if you heard about a school called Bobby Hill School. Which, which school? Uh, Bobby Hill? Bobby Hill School. I went to school in Gaytown, elementary school in Gaytown. Oh, elementary. In Singapore, Singapore old road. There was a school called Bobby Hill School. Mm. But then in, 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 in sixth grade and seventh grade, we started to study a course called civics. Yeah. But they used to teach us this course though, in Liberia. It's called civics. Yeah, I remember that. And this course, brother Dennis, 
And the part we're going to deal with, number one, what is the responsibility of the leadership? Number one, provision of security, welfare of citizens, promotion of political activities, promotion of economic activities. When we talk about that, we're talking about like in the basic infrastructures, roads, railways, bridges, tunnels, water supply, sewers, electrical grades. And so number five, the, the, the leadership has a responsibility for the provision of social amenities. You know, for example, when we were living in Pisa, there was a playground where the children could go on Sunday. Not mm -hmm. far from FM, FM, where FM had there. These are things that the leadership should be keen on providing. Security, welfare of citizens. The Zuko's, like the Zuko's in the country, the leadership should be keen on welfare, rehabilitation, promotion of political activity, economic activity. So telecommunication, internet connectivity, broadband access. Those are things. Now, what is the responsibility of the citizens? Now we talk about we talk about what the leadership should be doing, right? For example, hmm. just give us the basic infrastructure, make it easy for us to be able to do business in the country. Those people who the promotion of economic activity, so that the individuals who are here, or the individuals who are there, it can be easy for them. Provide the basic infrastructure, running water twenty four hours, running light twenty four hours. These are some basic things that the leadership should be doing. But what are the responsibilities? And when the leadership, that's why the government in Liberia has accountability structures built within. For example, that's why you have a legislature, you have a judiciary. These are people that should be keeping the executive accountable. But what are the responsibilities of citizens? Citizens should pray for the government. You have to obey the law, pay taxes, defend the nation, serve in court, attend school board ballot dinners. Another most important thing that citizens can do is that they can vote. Yeah. You have to come election time, vote ballot dinners for competent individuals. So that's, that's my take on, uh, if you feel that a person, brother Dennis, is not qualified, but when you are look before you vote, brother Dennis, do a little homework. Yes. Vote for a person who is qualified. Vote for a person who is don't just follow the crowd. You know what I mean? Don't just follow the crowd because they're singing some kind of song, and then you start singing the song with all mm -hmm. knowing the words of the song. And so it's important for us to check these people out to really make sure. And then, brother Dennis, one of the things I would say is this, right? If you You've never, you know, before individuals take the high office, we have to watch their history. Let's say, Brother Dennis, for example, was a person or governor before, before they became a senator? How did that person do as a governor? How competent was the individual as a governor? What did they accomplish as a governor? Look at their history and everything before you elect them to be senator or even before you elect them for the highest office. So I think individuals need to be educated before they vote. You have to make sure that the individuals you're voting for, do they have experience? Do they have the necessary education? Do they have a good team in place? What is their vision in everything? These are things that you have to really take into consideration. Are these individuals have a history of accomplishing anything or they have they never accomplished? If the individual is going to take care of the entire business of the country, have they ever run a successful business before? So these are things, Brother Dennis, the citizens can, before you vote, you can you can look at these things. Right. Don't don't just jump in the street and vote without making sure that the people are not qualified, they're not competent. You have to really check them out. And so what you have here is that citizens have a responsibility, and when these individuals are elected, they have a responsibility too. And that's how the system works. Thank thank you. I, I like the answer. So I I want to bring you closer again to current event, something that is happening in our community now. And I won't call names, so I will make this individual the name 
people like to use John Paul, I will use the name Wizard. So okay. What is the uh, God's way? We all, when we came to America, I came to uh, America some years ago, and we all want to live the American dream. Either you go to school, you get educated, you start a job, or you start your own business, and you want to be successful. What is the God's way of doing it? What the Bible said about that? And because they are Amer in America now, there are ways, you know, you want to get, uh, even what I'm doing now has a, uh, on focus on Liberia. So they are ways. So I'll give you an example. This question is not in a vacuum. We have a brother in our maze. I will use the name Wise. So we said, like all of us came to America and is doing a business. And we said now has done the business very successful, making a lot of money. And now uh, we say is being accused of doing something bad. So when it comes to doing business or getting ahead or being successful here, because there are a lot of uh, business knowledge, there are a lot of uh, maybe way to do it, there are taxes and all that. I'm not account. What is God's way? What does God say about doing business and get, being successful here in America? Okay, let me let me address that, brother Dennis. Uh, we, we we say first of all, when we talk about doing business God's way, brother Dennis, there are three things I like to focus on. Number one, integrity. When we talk about integrity, we're talking now, Brother Dennis, of standards of truth, honesty, accountability. So, uh, but before, Brother Dennis, before we said got into business, mm -hmm. we said was supposed to have a model of successful business. Because, Brother Dennis, business is longevity. There are businesses, Brother Dennis, in America that have lasted. Brother Dennis, you know this, 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 this cooker oats will be eating for so long, right? Yeah. Eh? Yeah? This, uh, uh, Brother Dennis, how for the, the Uncle Ben's rice for so long, right? Yeah. And, and yes, so, Brother Dennis, Dennis, Pastor, Pastor before yeah. you end, I, I was in the mall and I went to JC Penny and for the first time on the wall. It says, started, established 1902. I said, oh, wow. Okay. JC Penny established 1902. That's 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 over that's over a hundred years, right? Yeah. And so, brother Dennis, this is this is the first thing. The first thing is that before, brother Dennis, you get into business, what I really encourage individuals to do is to have successful models. Individuals who have, you see, brother Dennis, it's not just education; it's also experience and mentors having a person who has done that business successfully to mentor you and that person and so that's also a part of your education the education is not just going to school brother Dennis. what you learn in the classroom is going to be different if you come into a church yeah. so or doing a particular business you have to learn so you have to get mentors brother Dennis. people who have done it successfully to learn Taxes, brother Dennis, you can do taxes the right way or you can do taxes uh, all kind of way. But in the end, IRS is going to collect you. It doesn't matter how long it takes. If you cheat them on the taxes, brother Dennis, they're going to be penalty. And so we would encourage first, I would say number one, we said supposed to have had a mentor. A mentor, brother Dennis, is a person who was in our business before that you were doing. Mm -hmm. and have been doing that business for 20, 25 years successfully. And so those of us, the young people who are coming to America, it's very important that even when we get education, that we get godly mentors. That person can hold you accountable. Okay, what tax firm did you, oh, I want you to go to H Hour Black. But if we say, if I told Brother Dennis, we said to go to H Hour Black, but we said say he's going to go somebody in the corner because mm -hmm. the person will give him twenty thousand dollars. But H Hour Black will not give him nothing, but all the numbers will balance out. A good mentor will say, we said go to H Hour Black because that's how you're going to stay long into business. And so it seemed like we said they didn't have no accountability, someone to hold him accountable. Because that person will look at how you've been doing the business. A mentor is going to come and see how you're doing it and try to correct you. So number one, do business with integrity. Number two, do business with excellence. 
Excellent, brother Dennis, means that if the federal government come and look at your books today, they're not going to have problems. If, if the, the White House people come today, they're not going to have problems. Anybody come and look at your system, they're not going to have problems. So we're talking about business with integrity, excellence, and a commitment to exceptional service. That's what we're talking about. But the only way you can do it is they have trying to get rich overnight. You can't do it in business. But it seemed like uh, we said they didn't have good mentors. Uh -uh. We said they didn't have nobody to check in. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, and that's what, that's what I'm, we're coming to in the next, in the follow-up. So let me conclude the story on WISA. So WISA had uh, this business, a school business. And WISA has been accused and indicted by the federal government saying, WISA, these are the wrong things that you did. You were f selling false degrees to people who didn't go to school. You will sell the degree to them, they pay you, you know, and then that's it. And you graduate them. So that's the charge. So my question to you, what does the Bible say? So WISA now has been charged for a list of criminal activities, including fraud. Right, and uh, selling bogus uh, nursing school certificates and put, and those people are qualified, they are working in the system. Uh, they gave the novel that 7,600 certificates were sold, and people bought them. Those people went on to even pass the state board, and they are working. And now, in others, one state where they are working, they were able to put to, cash 26 of them and ignore their degrees. So Wisa is now in this situation where he's risked going to jail for up to 20 years. As Christians, because Wisa is a Liberian, what should be our attitude towards Wisa? In our community, the question of being, people are saying, this is our Liberian brother, let's pray for him. Others say, let the Lord take his course. Others say, crucify him because he's been, what he did is so egregious. What does the Bible say we should do when a friend, like we said, fall in trouble and is indicted for a criminal offense? Well, Brother Dennis, it seems like uh, the question is a very, very good question. I really like the question. There is a verse, though, that I, uh, that proverbs, uh, uh, if, if, if our, our support can help us with that proverbs 24, 17, 18. But then let me comment on uh, the question you raised, Brother Dennis. There are a couple of things. Number one, yes, Brother Dennis, I will, I will encourage uh, uh, people. I, I get multiple things, but we said needs more than prayer. That's the first thing I would say. Right now, we said needs more than prayer. Number one, we said need no, more than prayer. We said needs prayer because we are supposed to pray for one another. But he needs more than prayer. Number two, he needs a good legal team. Because if it's a, if it's a, if it's a legal uh, matter, then he needs a good legal team. Then instead of me criticizing uh, or we said, uh, I will try to look at how I'm living my own life. Because we said did his too, but even it's tax time in America. Am I trying to cheat on my taxes too? Because I have to take one in my eye first before I start talking about we said. I have to look at my own life and say the way how I'm doing business. Because there are some other people that might be doing business the same way like we said, but they were not caught. Mm. So you the first thing is before I talk about we said, I have to. Do an inventory the way I've been doing business. Has it been God's way? So this is supposed to just be an opportunity for me to reflect on how I've been doing business and how I've been doing life. But we still need prayer. We still need a good legal team. We still need counseling. Right. During this particular we... period, Let's start with the prayer. What kind of prayer? Are we praying for the charges to be dropped? Are we no, praying? no, 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 no. Oh, okay. What, what, what are we praying for? What are the prayer points when it comes to wisdom? <laughs> <laughs> well, brother Dennis, brother Dennis, you know, um, prayer. That the, the part of prayer that called prayer that there's confession in prayer. 
Okay. There's confession. There's also there's something called the prayer of confession. There's something called the prayer of repentance. Because brother Dennis, you you're talking about a matter where you have you have real real evidence, right? Yeah. When, when we talk about indictment, that means that that you have some real real. And so, uh, what you need is that uh, when we do certain things, uh, hopefully, uh, moving forward, we will learn to to do business by the book or business within the law. Because this is a case of where you did business not by the law. You did business in a criminal manner. And so, it's important for us to do business. But well, let's make sure that the business we are doing, we will have good legal advisors, good accounting advising us, so that we will not do it with we within the law. And for the Christians, we have to make sure we're doing with righteousness. Hmm. And, and the last thing you said, we said means constant, so prayer. Oh, uh, brother, that is number one. Brother, one right now, number one. The family, we said family, we have to give him a lot of support during this particular period because we said might be getting a lot of criticism. So we will hope that we said has a tight family that can provide a support structure for him. But number two, we said need a good legal team because we're going to go through a criminal case right now. Number three, we, we said during this particular period is going to affect his mind. So he needs counseling during this particular period because you're talking about something that can be a really difficult period in life, right? And finally, it will give him an opportunity to do a lot of reflection of when I get a second chance, I have to do it better this time. I have to do it within the law. Nothing wrong with getting rich, but get rich God's way. Get rich where you're not getting rich in the illegal way. Get rich where you're not getting rich in the fraudulent way. These will be, but uh, it's going to be a very tough period. And we will hope that his family will give him the necessary support during this particular period and everything. Thank you, Pastor. Let me now go to our viewers to uh, get their comments. And I know some will ask... Uh, uh, the first question here, the first person, uh, how are so called high pastor is do not drink part of the Ten Commandments? Did, did, did God warn against drunkenness? Yes, uh, the uh, I'll tell how that the that the, 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 the do not get drunkenness not in the Ten Commandments now, but it's in Ephesians. And and we the, the passage that Hawa needs is in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says, Do not get drunk with wine. So the Bible talks about it in the Proverbs chapter 20, verse 1 is the other passage. So, but it's not in the Ten Commandments, but it's in the Bible. I just want Hawa to understand it's not in the Ten Commandments, but it's in the Bible. River says pro is asking if or uh, the people that wanted to rape the old man, the angels, if they were homosexuals, or they were just wicked? Oh, they, they were homosexuals. Because, they, in fact, Lot said, do not act wickedly. So, in the, the Genesis chapter 19, or we were said, oh, these men were homosexuals. And the Bible said that uh, from the great to the small, we're trying to rape holy angels. And, in fact, they wanted to even rape Lot. And even when Lot offered to give them his daughters who were virgin, these have been very homosexual, we were separate, because they had no interest. Even Lot said, I will give you my two daughters that are virgin. The men said, no, we were separate. They said they don't want the daughters. They said they want the men. So the question we were separate is asking whether homosexual, yes, they were. They're interested in men. We were separate. They're not interested in women. Let's go to the abortion question. We were separate is also asking, uh, if there is a conception because of rape and incest, should that be aborted? Well, the real simple, the issue is that when we talk about abortion, my job is to tell you what it is from the biblical perspective. The choice you make now is left with you. Even when a child is conceived through rape or incest, that child is still a child. 
That child is still created in the image of God. That child still has intrinsic value. My job, River Step Pro, is not to tell you how to make a decision. My job is to tell you what the Bible is teaching. When, even if a person was conceived, River Step, through rape, that person is still created in the image of God. If a person was still achieved, uh, uh, born to insect, that person is still created in the image of God. So my job is to just tell you what the Bible says about the matter. But the choice that you make, River Step Pro, it's going to be a personal choice that you have to make. River says it's busy here. He's talking, he said Solomon used and commanded several demons to construct the temple of God. It, so if witchcraft is unacceptable of God, why did Solomon build God's temple with the power of demons? And to be honest, I never heard about this. In the I never, I never, I, I never, I never, I never, I never heard about Solomon uh, uh, building the temple with demons. Hmm. I wanted to put my confession out there before you even say it because I never heard it. So yes, I yes. I, I never. There's, there's no. What River says for is saying he has no biblical warranty for it. That's far fetched. Yeah. And, and and this question, I think you answered it already. Should we be fasting and praying for people who commit crimes so that their charges be dropped, or so that there will be leniency in their sentencing? Well, what we should do is that. Uh, you know, brother Dennis, you can, you can, you can, um, you know, brother Dennis, you can tell somebody the truth without. What, what individuals need to know is how do you tell somebody the truth in such a way that they can get it? There are two men in the Bible, brother Dennis. There's John the Baptist and there's the prophet Nathan. John the Baptist, when he preached to Herod. But then later on, Herod wife took it to heart. She didn't rest until she killed John the Baptist. Yeah. But then Nathan, he went to David and he told David, David, you are the man. But David never killed him. David confessed his sin. David wrote Psalm 51 as a result of that. So I think you can tell somebody the truth for the approach that you take. Because in this particular case, Individuals will have to learn, brother Dennis. We all have to learn from mistakes. When you fall, when you you commit a failure, when there's a flop, can you learn from it? Right. Mm -hmm. But the truth, the prayer is not for the sentencing. The prayer is also for us that we will. Be careful to realize that the same mistake that somebody made, we can make that mistake too, Brother Dennis. Right? That the same yeah. proclivities that in that individual, uh, the proclivities can happen to us. That's it. The Bible says, if any man think he's strong, let him take heed. Leave he fall. Yeah. So this just gives us an opportunity, Brother Dennis, to realize that. The get rich is a temptation that we have to deal with every day when we're in business. Do I take a shortcut or do I get this money in a slow way? If I get the money in a slow way, I'm happy I made my money for the day. I don't have to get buku, but I still made enough money today to cover all my expenses and overhead. So there's always going to be that temptation. Do I do it the right way or do I try to cut corners? And so... What is happening out there where we said, is it possible for it to happen to any other one of us? Yes. But if we don't keep the word of God in front of us, if we don't focus on God's way, if we don't try to be centered, and the people that we have around us, they're not godly advisors, we can end up like we said. Hmm. That's scary. As if the people we have around us <laughs> the people we have around us. Brother Dennis, if you're doing something and you say, Pastor Fuma, what I think you're for it, Brother Dennis, I would say, Brother Dennis, no, 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 no. That thing you're doing, Brother Dennis, I don't want you to do it. That means I'm your friend. Right? right? But if I see you do it, first of all, Brother Dennis, you say, ah, Brother Fuma, I got one real, uh, 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 I just opened brand new. Four story building in, 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 in Sando, radio station. I said, Brother Dennis, where you got the money from? 
I won't say, oh, Palestinians, oh, let me, let me fly to consecrate the building. No, mm. I'll ask the Palestinians. Palestinians, where, where do you, in such a short time, Palestinians, where do you get the money? Mm. Tell me, I'm your friend. I'm holding you accountable. I'm asking you the, the serious question and everything because I don't want to be a part of that. Right? Right. So the people around you, Brother Dennis, the Bible says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the what? Ungodly. So the people around you, Brother Dennis, the people that you have around you, we got to make sure that they counsel the people that speak into your life. Show me your friends. I'll tell you who you are. The company you keep, bad company can corrupt good work, good moral. Yeah. That's what yeah. Corinthians did. So, Brother Dennis, it's very important that the people around us, we have to make sure. Brother Dennis, you remember the story in the book of Mark where the four men brought a man to Jesus, they dug through the roof? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the friends you have in your life, are they bringing you to Jesus or are they getting you involved in 419? Hmm, that's powerful. The friends, brother, do they, do they keep you away from trouble? Or do they get you in black money? Your friend, eh? do they tell you to go to church? Or do they try to make you a pimp or a prostitute? What kind of friend you have? That's what we have to think about. Good word for we say and all of us. Uh, Pastor Freeman, thank you very much because you what you said there uh, remind me that set the stage for our next show because pastors. So our next show will be on uh, pastors, prophecies, deliverance, and wealth. And what, what I want to find out during there is, I mean, all the pastors we have, are they telling all the truth uh, about their miracles, about their prophecies, and uh, about their insight from God? And what should we look for? Because almost every prophet, they will do miracles for us so we can believe them. Should believers so see or give money for their breakthrough to this? And if we could to do that to whom? Should it be the pastor? What should it take for someone to get what they want from God? Is it the pastor? Is it their faith? Or is it God's mercy? Because these pastors are powerful, Pastor Prima. Some of them can even raise the dead just to make us to believe that they are able to do something for us. So I, I want us to uh, kind of uh, not to judge them, but to examine so as to give us the way how we should deal with them. That's our next. That's what I want us to talk about next. But yes, 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 yes. But yes. thank you for answering the uh, the questions. Uh, let me give our viewers the opportunities if they want to call in. We have a few minutes left to close. If they want to call in, uh, the number, I put that number on the screen. If you want to call in, I mean, those of you who have been calling, you know our numbers. That's the teleconference number here, 605-313-6004. The code is 791403-POUND. I want you to use that time, uh, Pastor Freeman, to go over what we, you know, kind of summarize what the Bible says about everything that we've discussed. If there's yeah, anything, there is anybody people. want us to stick in our ears, what would that be? Well, Brother Dennis, um, there is there is God's way to do things, and there are other ways to do things. And so Hello Pastor is trying to give you, show you God's way. There is God's rule. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, many, they're on the broad way, but they're not on God's way. That's where you find the crowd. But Jesus says, you find the gate. So hello, pastor is trying to take you away from the crowd to get you on the narrow way where Jesus said there are few. So hopefully as a result of our dialogue, somebody will learn that they don't need to Get something from Ghana to get a husband. Because if you get something from Ghana to get a husband, later on that husband will leave you because the husband doesn't love you naturally. To get success in business, you have to do some kind of sacrifice. That's not how you go up in business. But God's way, when we get it God's way, it will stay with us. 
No one can take it from us. And so Hallow Pastor is interested in showing you that that is the devil's way, but then there's God's way. And God's way is the better way. That's why Paul said, I show you a more excellent way, a more excellent way. God's way is the more excellent way. Thank you. God's way is the most excellent way. And the Bible says it. I believe it. I want to yes. remind you that uh, our fundraiser on Focus on Liberia continuing for the expansion of our work in Liberia. We want to do a couple of things and we need your help. We have a, a date for this, but in the meantime, February 18, we're going to have a live uh, fundraiser. But if you can help your 5, 20, 100, 200, 1,000, we'll help take us a long way. Also, I want to announce tomorrow is the State of the Union Address by President George Manawia. The State of the Union Address is uh, a constitutional mandate uh, telling the president to report the state of the nation to the national legislature. 8 p.m. tomorrow, I have assembled a group of qualified men and women to uh, discuss, to analyze the president's State of the Union. You don't want to miss that? Right here, focus on like, at 8 p.m. Eastern, and I will be your host. But let me check our call line again. We don't have a caller, so Pastor, we will be concluding here. I just want to hear your closing comments as we draw down the curtains. Again, thank you so much for your time, always coming to share with us what the Bible says and doing things the God's way. Yes. Brother Dennis, nothing is wrong in wanting to be successful. It's just that we have to understand that it takes time to be successful. You know, it's a process. And uh, you have to take, you know, time to learn. Uh, it took me time, Brother Dennis, to, 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 to learn the Bible. I had to, I had to put time into it. It took me time to be able to get advanced degree. It wasn't overnight. I didn't go somewhere, Brother Dennis, uh, for, for 10 days, and then I said I got a doctorate degree. And so we can't get it overnight. Taking shortcut is not God's way. And so we have to put in the time. You know, I, I remember Brother Dennis in Chicago when I went to Trinity, where at my graduate school, when we were doing Greek, Brother Dennis, we are doing Greek in the summer. You know how they call our class, Brother Dennis? They call it suicide Greek. Hmm. All over the campus, the only thing you see us with is like a cards, flash cards. So it takes time, Brother Dennis, for you to be able to learn something. And trying to get it overnight, uh, it's not God's way. The Bible says that the man should be trained in the way. He should go, and then that the man of God must be thoroughly equipped. So this shortcut, if that the shortcut, who is saying like, bro, the shortcut is gonna kill the what? Kill it here. I will stop there. Thank you very much. We also want to thank our viewers for being here and always staying with us. We appreciate your time, and uh, even for those who will watch this later on, we say thank you so much for watching. Until then, we say. Have a good night and God bless you.